Hey guys, it's Raven here from Tactical Edge Hobbies, and today we're going into the Aqua Gel Blaster by Ares uh, breakdown and uh, gearbox overview. So uh, let's get into it. So guys, the first thing you want to do is basically grab your blaster, you're going to pull down the retention tab on the back of your stock, pull to the end, there's a small retention tab just here. You're going to pull out and back, that'll uh, take off your stock. Um, just in case, if you've got a different stock on there, just because you don't like the stock one, fair enough. Just be make sure that you your wires um, have uh, cleared the stock before you take it off. Um, you don't want to be ripping anything out. Um, next thing we're going to go about is basically taking off the buffer tube. Basically, to get rid of this, uh, pardon me, uh, get this gearbox out, you will need to take out the uh, off the buffer tube. What you need for that is a uh, sort of some sort of armorous tool or a buffer tube wrench. Um, the easiest way to do it is basically line up. You're gonna basically want to take off the first um, castle nut or buffer tube ring. Um, I know it as a castle nut, just from back in the early days. And then basically you can unscrew it uh, once you've got some give. Just be careful when you un unscrew it, guys. Um, you don't wanna be taking off your wires with it. So just loosen it a little bit. It might take you a little bit. Um, you will also need to pull this spring plate just out of it before you untighten it. So, mine's been opened before, so mine's just hand tight. Um, you might need to get an armorer's wrench. If not, come see us down at Tactical Edge Hobbies, either at uh, Banyo, Mount Cravat, or Yatla at the Mega Store, and uh, we'll be able to take it off for you. Um, we'll help you out with any inquiries. So, uh, next thing from there, um, basically, you're gonna take this pin out, you're gonna unscrew it, um, you will need a uh, little um, Allen key or hex head. Um, I think this one's about two millimeters. Um, basically, it's gonna be for your front and back pins. Once you've unscrewed that, um, mine's already been unscrewed um, previously. What you're gonna do, you're gonna come down, just tap it a little bit. You're gonna pull that pin out. And then what you wanna make sure, guys, is that your bolt uh, on this is actually all the way forward before you go and attempt attempt to pull it off. So this one might be a little bit difficult. So guys, um, once you take your front pin out, what I'd probably recommend is taking your bolt catch out first. What you're gonna do is gonna get a small uh, pin punch or even just a small uh, hex head um, driver uh, is what this is. Um, basically there's a small, just for you guys at home, there's a small hole there. You're gonna line it up, basically uh, line it up and just solid tap with either your palm or for me, I'm gonna use a small mallet or screwdriver end. Just tap it, light gentle taps. Don't wanna scratch anything here. That small pin is gonna fall out, just that one there. So yeah, then just pull your bolt catch out and you'll be able to, I want, and that's after you, or do it after or before you've taken that front pin out. This will slide forward once we, there you go. Sometimes these are a little stuck. This one has eight, had 83 mags through it before, so this one's a little stiff. But yeah, just be gentle. Um, don't force anything, but apply a little bit of pressure when you need to get it off. Um, so yeah, now we're back down. We're down to just the motor grip now and the magazine release and the fire select. So that's what we're gonna get into now. First of all, you're gonna go the two, two screws up here. And you want a Phillips head, not a flat head. Unscrew her a few times. You're gonna unscrew her on both ends. Make sure you unscrew it all the way or you're just gonna end up looking like a knob on camera. All the way, kids, all the way. All right, then your two little tab wires up there. So just for you guys at home, pull up, pull up and away. Be careful of these little tabs, they suck to break. They suck even more to get new ones. Um, pull it all the way out. So this is your little Aries motor here. This is about a 14 to 16 TPA motor, just by the feel of it. Um, it's got a little bit of torque, not gonna lie. Um, probably gonna say about 14, yeah, 14, 15, probably most likely 14. Um, it feels a little less torquey than SHS motors, but still a good little motor. All right, from there on, um, you've got, normally you've got four little screws in the bottom of this pistol grip. Um, so get your Phillips head once again. You're gonna reach all the way down there. 
And if these things are being stubborn or have a long, uh, long screw to them, grab your, grab your second hand or your secondary. <laughs> uh, put your hand on there, um, just between two fingers, loosely, uh, and just spin it like it's a drill. Um, quickest way to get uh, screws out. Um, All right, we'll go ahead and do all that and uh, we'll see you back once we got this pistol grip off. So guys, once you get all those screws out, all you're gonna do is just yank up on the pistol grip. It's gonna come out just like that. Put that to the side and now you're left with basically this. Next, we're gonna move on to the magazine release. So the magazine release here um, is a two-part um, a two-part magazine release. Um, it's actually threaded. So what you're gonna actually need to do is you're gonna need to push, push that magazine um, release all the way in and you're just gonna unscrew it like so. Might be a little bit difficult. So yeah, you're just gonna unwind this until it pops free. Uh, mine's got, was less threaded in just cause I've had to take this down already today. So you might be there for a couple of minutes. Just be careful not to scratch your receiver or anything like that, unless you like that battle worn look. So once that's done, basically your spring guide's gonna be under tension. You know, hold it a little bit just so it doesn't hurt the camera, but yeah, it's gonna be under tension there. So, let it go free. Release it, take it out. Then we're gonna flip her over. So now we're onto the fire select and rear pin. We're gonna unscrew uh, your fire select first, just to release it. Take that out. Just be careful, there is a small little bit um, a small little bit here that does come out, so don't lose that or else you lose your fire selects. Um, all that little that little clicky part to the fire select is what you'll lose. Um, next, we'll move on to the rear pin. So you're gonna unscrew that, unscrew that. Just put your finger on the other side to hold it uh, while you unscrew it. So yeah, see if I can do this awkwardly as heck for the camera. There we go, that works. All right, push pin out, done. Um, and on the back, you do actually have a small little threaded spring guide. So this thing is gonna unscrew. Um, I personally use weird stuff like flathead screwdrivers because they fit perfectly in Allen head uh, things. This one here might be a little bit too big. So yeah, just line her up, push her in. Um, you will need a large Allen key for that one there. So um, I'm using a large flathead though and just wedging it in and unscrewing. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, I've done, that's what I do for every spring guide that I do. Um, large, large flathead, makes it easy, gets it done. So un, once that unscrews, pull your spring out. There's a spot spring there. It's about a 1.3. Um, if I had to get it an M rating, um, you're probably looking maybe like an M95 um, for, for like an M rating, uh, M rated spring. Next, we're gonna move on to the body pin which I have forgotten to take out. So basically you're gonna push it down uh, on one side, so either that side or that side, just find where the serrations are. So this one here, as you can see, it's got little serrations on it. You're just gonna put your um, Allen key on the other side, push it out, it should either just drop out or you might have to just tap it a little bit. Um, and then basically pull to the front, so pull front, then pretty much out. So yeah. I'm gonna wrestle for this for a little bit. Um, but yeah, it should just be um, forward and out. So yeah, um, I'll see you once I've gotten this out. Cut. All right. Three, two, one, actually cut. All right guys, so we've gotten the gearbox out of the actual box, um, well, gearbox out of the uh, actual receiver now. Um, my wires are a little all over the place. Basically this is what the fire select side looks like. Um, cut your actual fire select little pin here. This is all basically um, on a proprietary Aries MOSFET. Um, super, super nice though. Um, so yeah, super, super nice. Um, yeah, all controlled by magnets as well. So it's got a working safety as well, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip her over. Just be careful not to lose this little piece here. It does just fall out. I'm gonna flip it over. Um, you've got all your screws on this side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and unscrew it with just a Phillips head. 
All right, guys, so once you've taken all your screws, screws out, oh, pardon me, nearly all your screws, um, just remember you will need a small screwdriver um, just for the little MOSFET cover here. Um, but before we get into that, um, don't mind the rainbow cylinder. They won't be rainbow for yours. This is obviously my test unit. I've put 83 mags through this. It has been opened beforehand. What I wanted to talk about was the bushings and bearings setup that I've actually got for this. So um, my personal opinion on bushings and bearings will be different to anyone else's, um, depending on who you are. Uh, but I actually kind of like this setup, um, mainly because you've got your sector and your spur on bushings. Um, I'm assuming that would be mainly because your, uh, your sector gear is under that pressure from that spring. You know, it's going to draw that spring out. You want something that's going to hold up where well, you've, you've got, actually, you've got a uh, small bearing on your, uh, bevel gear there where your pinion and bevel make contact. So basically, um, my speculation for manufacturing it this way is basically it's gonna allow uh, the most speed um, or free-flowing uh, energy transfer uh, from the actual motor uh, to the start of that um, gear train uh, for the actual gearbox. So uh, let's just uh, finish opening this up and we'll get into it. So once your uh, screws are undone, you're just gonna pull it out. I'm gonna flip around this way and Gilly's gonna hate me in post. So basically that's it. There's one more little screw I haven't gotten to. It's just under this MOSFET cover, which I'll show you just before I finish taking it out. It's just hidden just there. I'm gonna pull that out. So you guys might be thinking, well, this looks awfully familiar to the, um, the, the APS uh, MOSFETs. Very similar gearbox and setup design. Um, I can guarantee you those, these are gonna hold out a lot, lot better. So yeah, uh, basically we're just gonna pull our mag plate off um, and we'll be able to open up the gearbox. So what I personally like to do, is I'll get a small hex head or a little pin screwdriver and I'll just push down on all the gears, um, the actual gear shafts, any reversal latch and the trigger um, before I go and try to take this apart. So. Open it up. So everything's gonna jump out on us. All right, and that is one opened Aries gearbox. Um, no, <laughs> uh, let's get into it. Um, so this one looks a bit schmooey and gunky. Um, not sure, I'll do my best without dropping everything under the table. Um, a bit, bit schmooey and a bit gunky. Um, Basically, it's just because I've put 83 mags through this, so um, there are some stuff you won't find in here stock, um, like the rainbow cylinder, as I said before. So I'm gonna pull these out. So you've got a basic little hardened return spring. It's actually got a, quite a nice bit of pull. Um, standard tapper plate, if anything, this looks like just any standard V2, uh, or dare I even say it, like very similar to the Warrantress ones. I know Warrantress is a, um, a modification for gel wool um, from a V2 one, but yeah, V2 tapper plate, move on. Um, you do actually have a V2 cylinder head um, just there, so you guys at home. Um, don't mind all the gunk in this. I have obviously done a bit, a few different mods. So got some good compression on it, that's for sure. Um, so this here is just some parts I had at home. Um, it's just the different uh, you'll get a polymer, um, I'm pretty sure it's a polymer piston head in this. Um, it's basically just to take the force off the front of the box. This here is just some parts I was experimenting with. So the inside of the gearbox is all TM spec. Uh, you'll be able to swap out, you know, pistons, you'll be able to swap out piston heads, um, obviously cylinders, gear sets. Um, yeah, so it's quite TM compatible in that regard. Um, but yeah, this is actually the Aries uh, piston itself. Brown piston, um, nice standard. Uh, it's a 15 tooth rack with the uh, with the 14 tooth actually ground down quite a bit. So you can see that there. So essentially it's a 14 tooth, but realistically it's actually a 15 tooth with just the 14 tooth ground down. All right. Um, let's get into the rest of this. <laughs> uh, basically you've got um, just your yeah, standard. Uh, these are actually pretty nice gears. Um, so as much as they look cast, um, they're not too sure about the uh, material they're actually made from. But um, this has held up to 83 magazines so far. 
and um, there's not actually that much wear on them. Um, it's mainly just grease and uh, gunk from me firing it um, because I didn't drain my gels well enough before doing it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, she's actually shimmed very, very well uh, from, from factory. Super, super nice. Um, you do obviously have, these seem to be slimline bushings as well. So there's plenty of um, room for you guys that want to change your gears out. Um, basically build, build different gears. I have seen a video um, on the, the Forbidden Gel uh, pages uh, where some dude actually did a DSG or a dual sector gear. Um, build one of these so I'm, I'm pretty sure the MOSFETs will be able to handle that I would very much wait until the programmer comes out um, just to be sure Because um, at the end of the day you want to keep your warranty so all right, so yeah, looks pretty standard um, There is a lot of schmew in here um, or schmew is basically the nickname for stock grease as uh, As a lot of our, us techs call it um, You got a proprietary trigger there um, Yeah, so actually quite nice um, the trigger spring is isn't too big it isn't too small um, it's just a nice thing so these things are chroning I think like 330 340 um, so this one was doing 300 when I tested it last night but that's because it had 83 mags through it um, and that was over I think like a month period so realistically this is due for a service so yeah as I said a lot of gunk in here I've just been thrashing this like there's no tomorrow um, and hopefully um, yeah so but a uh, very very cool little airy um, nozzle there very looks similar to a warrantress one almost um, uh, but yeah uh, slightly bigger rubber nozzle on there so just be aware of that if you ever do damage your nozzles you probably will have to wait until we get those in um, other than that proprietary MOSFET it's got a small micro switch, um, which I know you speedy boys like out there. Um, you can just tap these um, pretty, pretty quick. I guess you could put 13 to 1s in this and make it super, super snappy uh, for a speedy boy. Um, or for mill simmers, these are pretty good stock out of the box. So yeah, um, that's basically the basic overview, um, the guide. Oh, before I forget, you do actually have a threaded spring guide. So this little beauty does actually sit just in the back here, uh, lines up with your piston rail, sits in like that, and that's where your spring guide actually um, screws in. So yeah, threaded spring guide, super, super nice. Um, this box has had 83 mags through it, um, and there's no sign of cracking, no sign of wear. Um, there's marks from where I've taken a screwdriver to it just to test the material. Um, again, guys, this was my tester unit uh, before they launched, so I can guarantee you these are gonna hold up really, really well. Um, great quality. Um, great build, um, was pretty happy with them out of the box. Um, all you need to do is a slight tune to your hop up that's situated in your barrel. So yeah, that's it guys. That's uh, basically the basic overview of the uh, Aqua uh, Gel Blaster by Ares. Um, this is the GAR 002E. Um, so this is the mid-length, very nice rifle, super solid construction. Um, I'd probably rate that gearbox for a solid 8.5 out of 10 um, for a stock box. Um, I think that was probably one of the highest quality stock boxes I've seen forever. Um, yeah, no complaints here uh, on anything. Um, it's TM compatible with um, you know your internal parts, your gears, your pistons, uh, your piston heads, cylinders. Um, obviously, Aries nozzles and uh, cylinder heads are going to be Aries, uh, and the proprietary MOSFET's really nice. It's really snappy on 7.4 volt. Um, so yeah, guys, too easy. Um, that's been basically the uh, overview. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, and uh, if you want to come and talk to one of our techs, uh, we're based at uh, Mount Cravat and Yatla. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to come see us. Uh, my name's Raven, and it's uh, bye for now. Peace.